Hi, in this tutorial, we will continue our study of deductive databases, and for that we will implement a small database in, in Prolog. So, um, from our previous discussions, we know that a deductive database is basically a database plus some inference mechanism. So, the way that we will implement our example will be first let's define a regular um, relational database in data log and then we're going to add some type of inference by adding some rules. For this example we're going to use the following schema. Let's call this the company database. So the company database contains one, two, three relations which is employees, departments and supervisors. Most cases remember Instead of calling the relations, people call those tables. So it's like table employees, table departments, and table supervisors. The schema is defined the following way. Employees, the primary key's name, department, salary. So the primary key is this, which means this respecting that names are unique. For this small example, in this case, the name is primary key. That means this is also uh, unique, the name. And then supervise, this is the supervisor name, the supervise an employee. So uh, these are employees. So to get more information about the supervisor, we need to get it from employees, right? So from here we get the department and the salary, and the same for the employee. We join that with table employees. And um, these are things that we study in the first database course and the definition of the schema, how do we understand those, and we will see how we will implement them here. So this is the schema, it's important to review that. Now here, this is what we call the table employees, and you will rem remember that in the definition of the relational model actually, we call that a relation because employees is actually a set and a set of tuples. This is the first one. Or we can say this is the record or this will be the first row in the table employees. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements in the set, which will mean will be eight rows in the table employees. Similarly, we got here departments that has one, two, three, four elements. Now, the third table, which is supervised, I have that described or listed as a fact. So this is my table supervised. And just to see the different ways of implementing. So this is my first table. This is my second table. This is my third table. But instead of listing that as a relation, I'm using that as a set of facts. So this is like the first tuple of the table but here is how we represent that in uh, in prolog so here we got the supervised 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 actually they all should end with a period when we actually put it that in prolog so here we just was listing uh, well we, we changed that actually in the system but I mean, a, a, a fact in prolog. So here we say this is the fact supervised, and then this is the name of the supervisor. Now, something else that we know, because we're going to use that later in the deductive database system, but there is some type of hierarchy. Like here, I mean, I'm getting that information from, from, from here. Like, for example, ranking supervises three, three employees. So here in the three, these are the three employees that are being supervised by. Franklin and James supervise two, which is actually Franklin and Jennifer, and Jennifer supervise two. So from here later, we're going to derive additional information, like for example, um, we know who's a superior or somebody else that is a supervisor. For example, James is a superior of John because the supervisor is his supervisor. However, that information is not listed there. And this is a small set of facts. I mean, this three could even be a, a, a bigger depth, and then I mean, we will need something later. But uh, right now, we will see uh, this as a relational model, and later we're gonna go back to this three. 
So in this exercise that we will implement now, we want to solve the following four queries, which are very simple relational uh, queries, just to have an, uh, a comparison in the system and how we're going to make the transformation by adding that. So there will be, in the content section, there should be some activities. There is a posting activity number one, in which the first question is says, representational information of the relation of the database as a set of tables, and then represent that as a set of facts. So what, what is it that I'm expecting to answer here? Well, in uh, here, this is the information that I have. I mean, this is not represented as a table, even though I was even calling that some table right hand and like I said send the same here I got here for departments and then this this is not actually the table so here I have the answer for that let me see I think I need to move this a little bit there so for example table employees so look at the first record it says James CEO and uh, I think this is two hundred and ninety thousand so then that should be from here. You see, this is the first record. And the second record is this, in my table, Franklin administration, 87,000. So that's what I have here. So here I have all the records, and that would be the first table. The same for supervise. So supervise, you can get that from here so the first record it says franklin supervised john the second record franklin Re supervised ramesh so we go here that's what we had john ramesh and then that there's all the facts now for departments we again go here so ceo the location is in berlin again we're talking about one two three tables for that company, this is the schema, and these are the instances of that table. So that will be the answer for the first question, it's just to say, okay, can we visualize that the way that we have it in the relational model as a set of tables, or with this one, two, three tables. Now for the second question, it says represent all information as a set of facts in problem. So that means now this same information as a set of facts and this same information. And then it says here, do that in a text document. I mean, we could put that on here, but I prefer that on a text document because I'm going to copy and paste it in the, in, in, um, uh, in a text file for, to load it into problem. So it's, I have that file here. So here, this is the same information about employees. So I had that lower case, and then I'm listing the information here and ending that first fact with a period. The same with this. So this information that I'm highlighting is the equivalent of the same as this information and is the same as this table. Okay, so it's just that we visualize, visualize this in a relational model, and then we say, well, we we're doing that in the in this relational system. These are my three tables. Okay, so this is the information that I have for the tables. So again, each row, each tuple, you name table, open parentheses, you list the facts, and now we're using, I'm using all lowercase to make that easy, because if you use uppercase, uppercase means a variable in problem. So if I actually really want to do the uppercase, here I need to enclose that with a quote, and then I can put anything there. I'm not really concerned right now about the basics of the language, but just the implementation of the, of the database. Okay, so now let's go into the next part of that. So this answers the first two questions representing the data. So it's kind of getting the database ready. And then now, for example, once we have that, I have some queries here. So these are very basic queries. It says list the name of employees working in the business department. So from this table, and I'm putting the, the queries as simple as possible. So here is, uh, I want the name. There's somebody that works in business, so that should give me these two names, right? But the restriction is they work in business. 
So I only need table employees to list the name, the departments, then business. And that's it. Now, how do we implement that in Prolog? Well, the, remember that there is the prompt for the query system. And then there I will say, well, I need to open table employees. Then for table employees, I want the name. I put in an uppercase, so that makes a variable. The second um, element there is business. Then I should say lowercase business. And then I don't really care about the other attributes, so we put an underscore that says I don't care, and then a period, and that will be the, the word that we query. So to actually test that, and that's what I want you to do, what we need to do is go into your text file, and that's what I'm asking for a text file. And then we copy everything that is there. So we copy, then we go here, and then you see this is still open. Then we're gonna create the, the file that we need. So here is a t.database2.pl. Oh, I have that already here. So what you're supposed to do that is this uh, you paste it, and then should give you that. So you click here on it did paste you don't use control b then here you do control c to exit and you're supposed to say yes Oops. X. yes and then we go into g prolog then we load the file which is deductive data base to that pl close that square bracket dot remember that we looking for that yes so let's see if we can implement the first query so the first query says something of a business right employees I'm sorry this are from here mm, uh, here here this is the part so we're getting the name from employees that work in the business department Okay, so we should be ready. So we get employees on the name business and I don't care about the other element period. So it's telling me that one of them is Alicia. Then if I put the letter A, it will give me all. It says list, list all the names. And this, this should be the answer for that query. So I will stop here and I will continue with the next part of the activity in the next tutorial because it's already 13, more than 13 minutes.